Fisherman's Dream, part three, our final, our final part. Well, everyone, I wanted to tell you that I, it's not, you're not seeing things. We're working upside down today and we're going to do a couple of things. I wanted to tell you that I did have to flatten both pieces because everything was so wrinkly and full of water that the buckling was pretty intense. Um, here's the portrait that I did of the gentleman, the fisherman. I'm going to put him aside. He's just about done. I like all the values on him. And of course, with the sea behind him, that to me is, is the way to go. And of course, the darkness allows for the beard. So it's the value that pops the beard forward. I'm going to adjust some of my colors. I did go in with a, an ultramarine blue and um, I'm going to just adjust that a little bit and bring up a little more on his face and call him done. Let's put him aside. And you know what? Taking the frisket off is always so exciting. So I've got the needed, no, no, this is um, a rubber cement pickup. And I'm just going to use it instead of my fingers. I want a soft horizon. So I'm wetting the paper again. And everywhere I go, with the water, is where the the pigment will go. So that soft horizon is what I'm aiming for. I'm also aiming for Some nice color behind him where I can blend and soften. For me, I'm going to give you my secret and that is what is underneath is very often more important than what's on top. I do work wet, a lot of water into my watercolors. So there you go. That is definitely a wet surface. And now what I'm going to do is just kind of pick up some of that water, move it around, 
so that the surface is wet. but not soaking. I do have, uh, I, I don't know what the, oh, okay. Those are just particles, so they'll come out. They're gonna come right up, but I'm not gonna fool with them right now. Let me see if this is, yes, little particles, but it's, I thought it was paint. Over here I have, this is ultramarine blue with a little bit of cobalt. This is straight cobalt. And you know, after I mixed this, I realized I like the cobalt better, which is what I've used. I did add a little yellow ochre just to warm it up a little. And you can see where I'm just taking a little of that off. Well, here we go. <laughs> First markdown is the hardest. And um, I'm going to start right here. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep going. See what I mean by the soft horizon? This will read white. It may even read the white of the paper. But it's it will have some color. And I'm trying to create also the role of the sea. And once again, I'm just going to let that keep going. This is my 12 round. And now what I'm gonna do is just pick up the water. The other thing you can do is just let it roll. And what happens is it will pull right there. And now I think that's what I want. The last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to call this done, I do need to finish the boat and the gentleman. But what you can see is I've got all the bones here. And let me turn it around. And it's starting to bow up again. And this just allows me to add 
a little more while it's wet. Connect shapes, connect values. Remember it will dry lighter than what you see it here. it's buckling up again so um, let's just pull this down we're going to finish this video with a little yellow ochre in the foreground and go over some of this. Even the boat. Some of these larger areas can be broken up. The other thing I'm going to do is cover his outfit with yellow ochre. Here we go. Remember, color gets all the credit, but value does all the work. So, um, So you can see how all this will 
come through. Really want that beard to pop out, even on on this one. There we go. So much work is still needed on the inside of the boat. But what I'm doing is working with the values. So this area is going to be very light, which means everything around it needs to get darker. A little crimson lichen with the yellow ochre will allow for me to break up some of these places that got a little more frisket than I needed. So I'm on damp paper, almost wet. It's still very wet. It's buckling again. But that's, that's because we're working in watercolor, everyone. It's what we should expect. in this. The art should always read better than the photo because it's it's our interpretation and a lovely interpretation at that. I'm adding a little more depth with the crimson lake and the other thing you hear me say very often is instead of painting gray, black, and brown, use your colors. So I know this is Crimson Lake, but it's going to read the darkest dark, and that's more enjoyable than painting black from a tube. Well, we're going to end I want I don't I want a variation of brush strokes as well. I don't want them to all look like I did them with the same brush even if I did. So that darkened up the foreground a little. I see where I can even add some of that into Wow, I'm seeing it everywhere now.
So an echo, this is part of the boat, but these are along the shore. Right here too. Boom. So things are starting to dry and my brush strokes are starting to hold. So it's a good time to stop because I don't want this very, I still want things to be soft. It's too soon to go in there with dry marks. So let's just call this finished. For now.